Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. So today we're going to talk about degrees of freedom. I'm always impressed about the resolution in our two rooms here at the studio. So it's taken, you know, four years to get them to where I want them. You know, it's a long time, but you know, it's a labor of love because that's what we, we do and that's what I like doing. Or I wouldn't be doing it, right? So room resolution is freedom from distortions. I still have some. You know, I have an 80 cycle problem I've been chasing. I know how to fix it. I just haven't had the time to do it. But the most important thing is I know where it is and I know what frequency it's at and I know what amplitude it's at. So when I get to the point where I can fix it, then, you know, we'll, we'll do that. But probably won't happen because now we're moving the facility. So, but the bottom line here is if you lower distortions, you increase room resolution. Okay. And our gear today is really good. Even the lower price stuff has come a long way in the last 10 or 15 years. It's way better in terms of resolution than our rooms. So think about the room as analog and the gear as digital. You know, you want to get rid of the distortions that the room produces. And here's the hardest part to communicate to people. The distortions a room produces, you don't understand what it's doing to your sound. You think that's how things sound. It, it's not. That's how your room sounds. That's how your room places its stink or distortions on your signal, on your music. And when you start resolving these issues, your music just comes to life. People tell me after they treat their rooms, they spend days and days and days re-listening to all their favorites again. Why is that? Because they hear more. So two things happen. They have all this regret they didn't treat the room sooner. And secondly, they'll never live without it again. So mission accomplished in that case. But for all you others out there, you just don't understand the impact the room has on it. And when you pull that veil back and get rid of it, it's unbelievable. It's a very emotional experience. What's that saying? You don't know what you're missing uh, because if you don't know any different, or I don't know how it goes, but if you don't know what you're missing, you don't know that you're missing it, I guess. So gear's 50%, room's 50%. Let's focus on the room. Let's change. Get away from the gear. You, the gear you have is fine. Here's another thing people tell us. Once they tweak the room, they fall in love with their gear again. All the reasons they bought their gear in the first place start to come back through treatment, all right? Low so we're low frequency definition to match the mids and highs. That's gotta be an objective. I want my lows, my kick drum, my bass guitar to be individual, to be separate, to be distinct, to be defined, to have attack and decay, to have orders of harmonics to them, right? Low frequency separation to match the mids and highs. All that can be achieved. Now, you don't have that in your room. I'm sure you don't, but you can have it. And here's a situation where once you get it, you're like, oh my gosh, it does sound that good. It does, like I thought. Well, and that's the impact of your room. I wish I could come up with a way, in a short way, actually communicate to people the impact on your room or impact on your sound that your room has. That's the $64 million question. How do you convert or tell people, communicate to people the impact the room has? I can do it really quickly if you come to the room and we press the play button, but I can't do that. And I can't really make a recording. I, I'll try again in the new studio. I don't know if I can make a recording that really emphasizes, you know, the, the whole complete sound of the room because it changes all the time with energy. So I don't know if microphones can really give you that impact, but we'll try, you know, when we get to the new studio. Don't buy new gear and put it in the same room. That doesn't make any sense. If you're going to buy new gear, treat your room too. So you're elevating both gear and room. 50% gear, 50% room, right? So that would be the goal. Fix the room and keep the gear. You'll be way happier because then anything sounds good in your room. And if you want to increase the quality level of your gear, you'll have a better barometer to go by. You know, amplifiers, speakers, they're all very expensive. 
after a certain price point, you pay a lot to get just a little improvement. Now that's kind of a marketing hype and chase too. But the bottom line here is, you know, if your room is fixed and the resolution of the room is increased, all gear will sound good. So, and it never fails to happen. I get calls from people that, well, spent, you know, three days listening to all my old stuff. And you were right. I have those two feelings, regret and determination, I call it, because you won't live without it and you're sad that you didn't do it earlier. So degrees of freedom, you can have those if you reduce the issues within your room and we can help you with that. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.